It is time for the main event. Hello, everybody. Today, I want to show you how to set your income goals inside of Keller Williams Command. So once you've logged in, what you want to do is you want to go on your left side and you're going to go to reports. When you click inside of reports, you're going to have a couple of different options. The first things you want to click on is goals. And then when you get to goals, if you've already done this, or if you had old ones, or maybe your team leader, somebody threw them in there for you, you're going to see them up here. If not, you're going to check and see what you got. And we're in 2020. So we're going to hit goals settings. Then it's going to bring us into the Kelly guide for goal settings. So all we need to do is hit get started. Once we're started, we're gonna get a series of questions coming up that are gonna lead us to some final numbers. So what we wanna do is scroll down a little bit and start with our annual profit goals for this year, 2020. Then let's figure out what your average goal is that you actually wanna do. So what is your 2020 annual profit goal? Let's say it's 100,000. Then we wanna move into expenses. So these are fixed expenses that you're gonna take on over the course of the year. So some people like to add their business and their personal here. It's up to you. Whatever you know that you're going to have to pay for, you want to make sure you're in here. And remember, these are fixed expenses. So think of things in here that you come up that you have bills every single month that you have to pay. Add those up monthly and then multiply that by 12. So let's just say your expenses every month are $3,000. We're going to multiply that by 12 and we're going to get $36,000. Then I want you to think cost of sales. So cost of sales is something that only happens if you sell a house. So a couple common things in there would be number one, your market center's cap. Number two, if you have any team members that you're paying. And number three might be a transaction coordinator that you pay in a transaction-based basis. Also, referral fees could even be grouped in there because you're only paying those out if they close. So make your best guess on whatever your cost of sales might be. Then I want you to scroll down to business makeup and think of what the breakdown of your business is. If you've been working on this and been tracking this for a while, you're in good shape, just plug your business numbers in there. And if not, what I want you to think is usually what happens is newer agents tend to lean a little bit heavier towards buyers. Usually the leads are a little bit easier to find and it's a little bit better of a starting point for them. In the long run, we hope to have a balanced business as this is really gonna allow us to be able to leverage and grow a team or scale and live a pretty balanced life. So if you're newer in this, I would start having your buyer percentage a little bit higher, maybe as high as 75, 25. If you've been in the business for a little bit or if you've tracked this, put in your accurate numbers. And if you're trying to get to building a team or having a balanced business, put in 50-50. Then wherever you are in the country or in the world, think about what your average commission is. So we're down here in South Florida. Our average sales price is between 350 and 400,000 in Palm Beach County. So uh, at between two and a half and 3% commission per side, we're gonna get roughly $9,000. So I'm gonna leave $9,000 as my blank. And then I'm gonna hit next and take us on to the next screen. Now, when we get to next, this is where if you've been tracking your conversion rates, you're gonna be in really good shape. And if you haven't been, you're gonna to have to kind of go with what some of the industry standards are and then work from there as you do track and as you develop a track record of success in the business. So number one is your leads to contacts. And what I want you to think of, however many leads you get, how many of them turn into contacts? We study this pretty hard in our market center and usually it's about 20% of people actually end up being a contact from whatever amount of leads come in. So I'm gonna leave that at 20%. Next is gonna be your number of contacts to your appointments set. So if you get 100 contacts, how many of those are you able to set appointments out of? If you get really good and work on your scripts and have a great database, that could get as high as 20%, but usually you're gonna be a little bit smaller of a number than that. So I'm gonna put that at 5%. Next, we're gonna do appointments set to appointments kept. So if you set 100 appointments, how many of them are actually gonna show up? For me, historically, throughout being a team leader, an individual agent, an agent on a team, and running a team, it's been right around two-thirds of people actually show up for their appointments, whether they're buyers, sellers, investors, tenants, real estate agents, recruits, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna keep that 66%. Next is gonna be appointments kept to agreements, meaning if you go on 100 appointments, how many of those turn into agreements? So if you're very buyer heavy and you're doing a really great buyer presentation, you can get this as high as 85 or 90%. Uh, if you're very listing heavy or you're new in the business, it could be down to 50%. So I want you to keep that wherever you think. I would say the lowest it should be is about 50% and the highest it should be really no more than 85%. Next is agreements to under contract or pendings. Meaning if you sign up 
you get a listing agreement or list your buyer, that means you're gonna have however many agreements that is. So let's just say 100. And of those, how many of them are actually gonna go under contract? So we're gonna leave that around 75%. And then of all the under contracts that you have, how many of them actually get to closing? So if you have buyers or sellers, there's always that chance that uh, financing is gonna fall apart, there's gonna be an inspection issue, there's gonna be an appraisal issue. So right here is where we're gonna get the chance to set that. Historically, it's usually around 80%. As the markets get tighter and harder, it might go down, could get down to 50%. Uh, and when things are really on the rise and things are going good, this could get up to 90%. It will never be 100%, so make sure you don't put that in there. Then we're gonna hit save and continue. Once we do that, it's gonna bring us to our next screen, which is kind of a review of our goals and a summary just to see what we actually have to do. So based on what we put in there, I wanted to net $100,000 in profit. So to do that with our cost of sales and our operating expenses, we're gonna be up around 172,000 is what we need for gross. And it breaks down our business, how we make it up, what our average commission per unit is and what we put in as all of our conversion rates. This looks good, I want you to hit what's next. And then you're gonna move on to view my goals. And when you hit view my goals, it's gonna give you a breakdown of what you need to do to hit that goal. So based on the numbers that I put in, I would have to do 6,434 leads. I'd have to generate 6,434 leads in a year. That might sound like a lot. It's only about 600 per month, that's not too crazy. For total number of contacts, I'd have to make 1,286 per year. So that's a little bit over 100 a month, really not that many. For appointments set, I'd have to set 64 for the year to hit my goal of $100,000 net. So that's uh, in between one and two per week. So we obviously can't do one and a half appointments, so we would set our goal at two per week. Our annual goal of number of appointments kept, meaning every week, if we kept just one, we'd actually exceed that goal. Our total number of agreements would be 32. Our total number of properties under contract would be 24, so that's two a month under contract. And our total number of closings would be 20 to hit our goal of putting $100,000 in your pocket. So if that looks good, then you're good to go and you can move on and get right into the activities. And if not, you can go back to goal settings, check those out and start working on those. I hope this helped you guys. It's really important to make sure that you have goals set so that you have a target that you can shoot for. And remember, Gary Keller always says, think big, aim high, and be bold. See you soon. Yeah.